Hello and welcome to another tutorial and a look through at Foundry. Now one of the most requested items I've uh, had on the YouTube channel is for other modules that will help when you're using no system. Um, so at the moment uh, all I've got installed on here is the simple world building and the simple world building is a base system. I've created four actors here um, and they're just basic four basic actors. Um, I've got Anita here, which is um, if we look at the attributes, she's got two groups: stats and damage. She's got a body, mind, and spirit for her stats. And at the moment, if we want to uh, roll one of these, we can do a formula, as I showed in a previous video. So the we have a damage formula here, which is melee, and that rolls 1d20 plus adds the stats body. So that will roll 1d20 and add 2. And if we roll that in the chat over here, you can see 1d20 plus 2. And because I've written melee attack in label, there we've got it there. We can also do it from um, a macro in the bar here. So in this case, um, I am going to be rolling a 1d20 and selecting the at damage and uh, at damage and we want we would have to add in that one we would if we wanted to roll um, a the body here we would have to do 1d20 plus at stats dot body and that would add do the same sort of thing execute a macro roll 1d20 and add the plus 2. So let's have a look at some modules that can also help us. Um, so first off, we're going to look at the bar brawl module. As with all modules, you have to enable them in the manage modules. And once you get them enabled, when you go to configure settings, you will have any settings that we've got. And basically what the bar brawl module is, will add additional resource bars to your actors at the moment these have got the base um, health on so uh, Anita's got 10 health of 10 so that is showing it 10 health of 10 there's no label on it but if I want to we can show that as a fraction and then you see 10 out of 10 or we can do it as a percentage save it and you can see now if we zoom in Anita has got 100% but what we can also do is add further resource bars uh, because at the moment you in simple foundry uh, simple world building you've got two bars you've got your resource your uh, health bar and your power bar so if you want to add another bar if we go to the token settings go to resources and this is where we can have an individual bar for that person so at the moment it's set to health if you want to set it to power, we could do update the token and then this now it's showing the power bar. If we switched it back to health and let's say that we've got a sanity mechanic and we want to add uh, a sanity to it as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a resource and we can have it a custom resource. We can also set it to power automatically or a, a, another attribute if you wanted to. I'm going to set this for custom. Do I want it visible? Yes. And let's have it three out of three. And we're going to have it at the top or the bottom. We'll have it up the top. So update it now. And there we have our new bar. But let's say we want to add another bar. Let's or let's do that. Let's add another resource bar. Uh, this one, we're going to have another custom one. Always for owner, this one can be two out of two, and this one is going to be black and white. And update the token, and there we have it. And we can change each of these resource bars. So if that was down to one, we can change that there. One, there we go. Uh, here on the bottom bar, we could change either one of those bars. Let's say that one changes to one, and that one changes to five. So there we can set as many health bars up. And this is ideal if you want to run something like Numenera or Cypher when you've got three health bars. This is a nice, easy way to set it up. So that is the bar brawl. The next one we're going to talk about is the bonus die. 
uh, module. And basically the bonus die module allows the GM to give players bonus dice. And if you notice down in the bottom left hand corner here, um, I've got three players, or two players, player two and player three. Player two is logged in on my other screen. And as a GM, I can award them bonus dice. Um, and we click the plus, I have now given Bill two dice. So what does this mean? Well, that's another resource that you can use in your game. So if Bill now uh, wants to spend one of his dice, and let's come into a Bill's login. So Bill, on his uh, attribute, he has got two dice being gifted to him. And if you see in the chat, you can see that the GM gave player to a bonus dice. So let's say um, player to Bill wants to spend one of his dice. He clicks the dice and player two has used his dice and reduced it to one. And you could use that bonus dice for any sort of resource, bennies in Savage Worlds or Fate Points. What player two can also do is he can gift his dice to another player. So let's say he's still got one of his dice left and he wants to give player three his dice, one of his dice, clicks on the gift marker and in the chat player two is gifted a bonus dice to player three so a nice and simple system there for adding bennies fate points or whatever you want to do to your system and the gm has obviously overall control he can reduce and increase dice as he sees fit okay the next um, module i'm going to look at is power cards by sky now basically power cards by sky is a nice way to do um, some fancy macros and if i open this macro up here is the macro and what it does it references um, attributes based on actors in the sidebar and you can write a really nice pretty um, chat card and macro for it the downside is uh, you cannot use it uh, at the present time on simple world building where you've got your attributes in the group like I've got here so I've got body and mind and spirit in the group stats it won't find those so I created two further cards uh, two actors here Charlie and Daddy and Charlie has got the attributes body mind and spirit and Daddy has got armor body mind and spirit and armor is set to 12 so what we can do in this power card is this is set to chat and if you look at the web page which i've linked to it uh, gives you an example we've uh, set an emote which is some text and the text says charlie stabs viciously at a foe with a jagged short sword the title of the card is going to be short sword we can set the text color and the background color using the uh, html um, hex codes then we've got a subtitle, and in this one it's set as melee weapon attack, reach five foot. And then our next command is attack, and that's going to roll 1d20 and add Charlie's body. So this will add one to the 1d20, because it's the attribute body found on the, two, the actor Charlie in the sidebar. And it's going to compare it to the actor Daisy. I know I've spelt the name wrong here, but in the side it's Daisy and her attribute armor and compare it to that and then it's going to do a damage roll which is going to add 1d6 um, and add charlie's body and adds these text piercing and then it will give me an optional critical roll so let's roll execute this macro and as you can see here it all is so we've got the icon for charlie which hasn't been set it gives us our text it gives us a nice heading here it gives us our attack roll, which is 11, but obviously Charlie's got a body of 1. It's versus the Daisy's armor class of 12. And if I change Daisy's armor class in the link actor on the side here and change that to 10, now when I run the macro, that should automatically pick that up and it's versus 10. So it's got to be an actor set in the sidebar here. It's the damage. And then it's given a roll for our additional damage. So that gives you some options there for setting up some nice fancy uh, macros with some nice formatting in the side. So that is Power Cards by Sky. The next module I'm going to look at is called Combat Enhancement. And Combat Enhancement adds to uh, 
to combat. So let's add all four of these into our combat. We go to our combat and now we see that we've got some additional details. We've got um, some, we can auto the HP directly in the combat tracker. So Anita, uh, this is confusing actually. Obviously I've got plenty of resource bars. So let's get rid of some of these resource bars for Anita. Um, and then that might make it a little bit easier. So we'll get rid of this custom uh, one here. And get rid of this custom one here. And that should, there we go. So there is Anita's token bar. So she's got five hit points. So if I wanted to increase this to six, I could do this in the combat tracker or in, in, increase it to 10. And it also shows the GM all the health for all of the individual actors. Um, I've not really set up a health bar for this one. So if we set up the health bar here, uh, resources, we're going to add health bar, always for everyone. Update, there we go. And then you'll see now we've got the health bar. The other thing that combat enhancements allows you to do is you can move the people around in the combat tracker. So if you've got a system that hasn't got initiative, you can move these around as you uh, want. Um, as opposed, the other thing that it, uh, I have to mention is that in here, that the um, health bars will only appear for um, actors that you own. So you won't, and um, if it's shown for everyone. So uh, that is something that's quite nice as well. Uh, so that's a nice, easy, uh, simple one, uh, combat enhancement. The next one I'm gonna look at is clocks. And this is ideal if you've got a powered by the apocalypse game, because this adds powered by the apocalypse clocks. As you can see here, there's two ways to bring them in. You can uh, use it as a uh, tile, which you bring in, and you click on the icon here, drag it in. Or is it clicking? I can never remember this one now. Uh, there we go. Let's do the easy one first. An, act, an actor created. So basically, create a new actor. We'll call this uh, countdown. And then what we do on the sheet, we change the sheet from world, the simple world building one to a clock sheet and save the configuration. And now we have got our actors icon. We can in the, change the type. We can go to blue or yellow. And we can increase the um, number of segments that are fill in and we can select how many item, um, sides on the clock we're having so four eight six and twelve so we can have a 12-sided clock and we can leave it in the side there or we can drag it on to <coughs> excuse me onto the canvas and if we reduce it we can leave the actor on the side there so that's the first way um, to get the clocks in. Uh, the clocks in. The second way is via the um, tiles, and this was the one um, I struggled with at first. Um, and basically, if you want a quick clock, you click the. Let's have a look. We go up here, tiles. Drag it in. Update. Yes. It's not going to close now, is it? No, nope, not going to close. Let's have a look at this. There we go. Right. Um, I think with this one, it's something that um, maybe I need to look at um, a, a bit better um, for this one. Um, I, I thought it was just a matter of clicking on the, oh, there it is. There we go. 
it puts it in the middle of the sheet that was it that's a member now and I've got loads of them so if you click on the click tiles on the side click it will put one in the middle and then on this you can set up how many chunks uh, how many uh, sides you have and you can fill them in from here so that was uh, that's uh, with that one it puts it in the middle so that is a uh, an easy way so sorry about that one should have uh, remembered how to do that one but hey this is live broadcasting this is what you get okay the next one is called roll of fate so let's say you've got your four characters in your combat here and uh, the bad guy is going to strike one of them um, which ones are going to strike with this module you select all four of them click on the um, yin and yang here and this is going to select one of the four selected actors so we click fate has spoken bill you have been chosen let's just pick two of them and do it fate has spoken bill let's bill again let's click again just in case there we go but it's not selecting the others so a nice easy way to pick someone and if you go into the configuration of this one I say with all of these they got some configuration to do I'm looking at them roll of fate you can change the uh, leading texts so fate is spoken uh, you can have a prefix to it you can add a suffix to it one thing I did notice with these suffix is um, if you try to put a space if you leave it blank as it comes in the box let's select you notice it doesn't leave a space and if you try to put a space in there every time you try to put a space in it and save it and do it again it removes the space so the way I've had to do it is by using a bit of HTML trickery and adding the old and NBSP colon which will add a space Obviously, you can change the, uh, the colors, so let's change that to silver and see if that does anything. Save the changes, and now when we roll it, it should. There we are, there's silver, and it's given us our space. So that is the roll of fate module. Uh, we've got another one more module to look at, and this is the special dice roller um, module. And what special dice roller does, it gives us a way to um, look at a, um, I'm going to bring this one across into the main screen. Uh, it lets us use uh, dice from Legends of the Five Rings, Vampire the Masquerade, Genesis, Star Wars, Hero Quest, Hexen, Warhammer Third, The One Ring, and Descent Second Edition. And basically, that's um, you're going to have um, some special syntax that you put in the chat, and that will. Uh, give you the dice rolls so what I'm going to do is because um, I don't know all these systems I'm going to copy some of these into the chat and we'll see for so for legends of the five ring it's l5r and the syntax rr2w and if you roll that there we are it's re rolled some dice from legends of the five rings so let's try some genesis so for genesis dice it's uh, forward slash gen and this uh, syntax is going to be B2S3CP. And there we go. It's rolled the dice as appropriate. And we've got it for Hero Quest, Vampire the Masquerade. Let's roll some Vampire the Masquerade dice. Uh, forward hash slash V53H4S. And now we've got some vampire the uh, masquerade dice so that is a nice little system if you're using one of those listed uh, for rolling some dice that aren't covered by dice so nice so that's all the modules but i've got one special uh, tip that came up um, on the discord the other day and that's for posting html into a journal so if you've got a html page you can put it in a journal and I'm going to um, give you the syntax in the chat below um, but let's go to the journals I've got a page here called HTML and this is beginning from the web page uh, which is at Crobby 
github.io quick reference page and what I'm going to do is show you the web page in a separate browser window and then you'll see how it's working in the journal. So this is the web page, uh, Crobby GitHub IO D&D 5v quick reference. It's got a uh, some conditions movement and if you click on one of these it gives you a pop-up. So what this does in the journal if you pop this into the uh, go into the description click on the source code you can see it's pasted in and then when saved it gives you the HTML inside so you can use this for any HTML uh, page that you've got and for, and you also get the pop-ups as well so this is a great little way so if you for example if you've got something on D&D Beyond you want to use you can put it any in your HTML and have it dynamically linked there. So that's a nice little one as well. So those are the modules that um, I hope you find um, some uh, useful. Um, to, oh, one more was GM notes. That's, that's GM notes. That's, that's the one I didn't mention. GM notes. So if we have a token, it's going to mess around with these now. Okay, and there's. In the top is called GM Notes, and this will give you a hidden area where you can add some text where the players will not see it on their um, sheets. So if I go to items, I've created a sword. The sword says a sword. So let's go and have a look what player one sees. Player one, if they go to the items, they got permissions, they see a sword, a sword. Excellent. But let's say now. Um, as a GM, I want to make this a plus one sword. If I click GM notes and hit the edit, I can add magic sword plus one, save it, close. And now this is saved in the GM notes. Now in other systems, you can actually transfer this across between uh, GM notes and the description, but in simple world building, it doesn't work that way, but you can still save these the notes. So. A gym notes is magic sword plus one. If we go back to the player's view, they don't have the gym notes, so they can't see it's a sword plus one. What you can also do is in your actor, so his actor is Bill, and this is I can add a description. So let's say Bill is a young man. So that is my description, Bill is a young man. And I save that as the GM. If I go back to the GM and open Bill. So Bill, Bill is a young man. I can also add GM notes and say, he is a werewolf at night. And save that. So I've got some extra GM notes in there now, but the player can't see. Okay, so those are the modules. Uh, I think I've got them all this time now. So we have got modules we've talked about today is bar brawl, which for adding those extra um, resource bars, bonus dice for rewarding dice to players, clocks for adding PPTA clocks, combat enhancements, which uh, allows you to alter HP and give some uh, reconfigure people in the um, the combat tracker. I didn't mention dice tray, um, but that's one that I've talked about before, which gives you a dice tray beneath the chat here, which allows you to roll uh, dice nice and simple. So, for example, roll a, a d4, it will roll one from there. If you want to two d8s, click on it twice, plus one, for example, you can do that in there, roll d100. So that's a nice, simple dice roller. Um, GM notes, just covered, the power cards, uh, roll of fate, and special dice roller so i hope you find that all interesting uh, if you've got any more ideas of things that you'd like me to cover let me know in the uh, notes below and uh, i'll see you all on the flip side mm -hmm.